All right. Uh, okay. Um, so what we are going to do today, we are going to um, talk about, first of all, uh, project questions. Uh, I've already done an overview in the other section and posted it for the project, and I don't know if you saw it or not. But uh, anyways, um, any questions about the project or anything that you want me to talk about about the project? So project questions? I, I just have a question. Um, yes. I'm not, uh, I, I'm just wondering if um, like we need destructors for, like we don't need any because we don't have any dynamically allocated memory for MS1, right? Remember that when we were talking about um, like when we started talking about virtual functions, what did I say? Do you remember that? I said, from now on, no matter what type of uh, class you have, if you don't need a destructor, you create a virtual empty destructor for it. Okay, thank so you. So that's what you, so if you, if there is no dynamic memory allocation, there is Nothing in, I think in menu we do, uh, in parking we do have dynamic memory allocation in MS2. But yeah. yeah, so for that one you need a destructor. But for the first one you just create a, a virtual empty destructor just to acknowledge that you understood what I said that day. <laughs> okay. All Thank right. You. And, okay. All right. Any other questions? I think, yeah. I think I got like errors when I tried to do like a menu item destructor though. No, I don't know. Menu, I, menu don't... item destructor? No, you can't. Because Me it's private. Yes, it is. Okay, so, so that's the only one that can. Yeah, but but even if okay. you put it, I don't know. Actually, I don't think there's any. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be an error. Oh, let me check it out. Okay. I'm going to do it now. <laughs> But the thing, the thing is that my uh, menu is completely different with yours. Mine is fully dynamic. Let me just check. But it right. shouldn't make any difference. Let me check it out. It wouldn't hurt if I checked. Let me just check it out right now. So I'm going to go OP244. Uh, and also the due date for Milestone 1 is stated for today. But you, uh, it, it, like we don't have to hand it in today. We can hand it in next week and not get any marks deducted, right? Exactly. But don't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Please do not procrastinate, okay? Uh, yeah. Because, because soon uh, milestones are going to come up that is going to be tough to write. These are easy mm -hmm. breezy stuff that you are using first half of the semester concepts. Now we're going to immediately jump in into interfaces after this in marks milestone three. So you mm -hmm. need to be ready for it, okay? Actually, interface is very simple, but but anyway. So let me let me just uh, try and see. So milestone two. Um, so um, I'm gonna stop sharing the thing because it's being recorded, and if I bring it up, just a glance is enough for everybody to see what my solution is for it. I'm gonna stop <laughs> sharing the screen, uh, and then open it up. I also think like when I ha had like empty destructor definitions, like for uh, it kind of said like you're redefining like the destructor or empty destructor or something like that. Oh, just put the destructor in the CPP file. Yeah, uh, like I, I, I did that too. So uh, well, let, but, let's see. Give me a second. Say, yeah, check yeah. it out and see what you're talking about. Um, set as startup project, set as startup project. Where is mine? There we go. So, uh, my menu.h over here. My menu does have a destructor. No, it does have a destructor. I'm not getting any, any, any problem. That's just for menu, right? Not menu item. I, of course, uh, everything I have is is uh, everything I have is dynamic. Like, let me just um, I'm gonna do this. Give me a second, just to show you. So my menu, right? This is just the header file. It doesn't matter if you actually see it or not. But this is my this is my menu. I'm oh, sorry, uh, you're not sharing anymore. Yeah, it is coming. Give it a second. Oh, okay. There you go. 
So, so as you see, I have everything over here. My menu is actually, and as you see, I have a virtual destructor in here. Right. But the content of this is in my menu.cpp, which I'm deleting my. So I to make it easier, I took this out the, the, the dynamic memory allocation for the menu. So and I'll, as you see, like my menu items, an array of pointers, but yours is just a regular array. So yeah. Um, right. So I hope this, this explains. But uh, then you can you can. Uh, do you have it on the repository? You want me to take a look at it? Um, I I removed it, uh, but I can change it real quickly. I just but have yeah, to add like if the, if the... something like if you want to, if you want me to take a look at it, sure, I'll take a look at it and uh, we'll see what we'll see how it works, or we can do it after sure. the class if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. Um, yeah, but sure, um, anyways, you should be able to, you should be okay to have the menu item. And just uh, for um, MS2, set as startup project, for MS2, this is how it looks like. So essentially, you're going to have um, the messages printed, and it, it runs the menu twice. So first, it checks. So it go you go 1, 1. It shows parking guard, then 1, 2. It shows the other one, then 1, 3. And then you go 2, 3, 4, 5. And five will tell you um, it will close the parking. You want to close it or not? Um, you put some garbage, and then you put say yes. And this at signs that you see, this is the second time your menu is being ex your parking is being executed. So for the second one, it runs it to check the exit because close and exit both exit the program, but close completely wipes out all the data which means the parking gets closed at night and all the park cars are towed out so there's nothing in a parking exit program is like a pause you exit the program and you can come back in so if you choose exit program and I would say yes over here you see it says saving data into parking that yada yada that parking data that see these are all messages none of these happen uh, we all hopefully know that that all it's a complete mock-up of an mock-up of an application it's just the model uh, to show the client what the out final outcome is going to look like but not how it works how it works is in milestone <clears throat> three four five and and um, yeah um, any questions uh, about the project Uh, professor, oh, can yes. you hear oh. me? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, hi. Oh, I don't have a uh, I have a question regarding the util file. So I use the util file you provided mm -hmm. to put into my menu.cpp. So I did like utils ut in the beginning uh, of my file, and it's giving me linker issues. Like, um, the, I have a linker have it, error. Do you, so have it, do you have it in a repo? Do you have it in, um, in your Git repo so I can bring it up and see what is uh, wrong? Um, right now, I haven't pushed it to, to Git yet. If you push it, um, I can take a look at it and tell you what it is that is wrong with it. No OK. Choice, um, if you want me to. <laughs> like, Do you have some time after class? Yes, or? I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, I do have. But after the class, I have to eat. Okay. Uh, oh, so, okay. Yeah, but I'll, I'll but, but my eating is is usually like is like a yeah. It's not, I don't it take it doesn't or, take much. So, <laughs> so yeah. So. Or is it possible that I talk to you during your during the office hour on Thursday? Oh yeah, that's fine too. Office hours, I'll be here. It doesn't matter. You can just can Okay, I guess it. then or, I would talk or, to you. Or people, mm -hmm. this is what you can do too. You can go to um. You can go to uh, Microsoft Teams, open up your Microsoft Teams app, okay, and uh, go click on calendar. So this is my schedule. As you see, uh, like these are the things that I have. The ones that are solid are the ones that I cannot talk to you with, but the rest, they're all available. So what you do, you go over here, say new meet, new meeting, okay, for example, 
and if you set up your own schedule over here even I can set up a meeting for you so if I want Faye oh no uh, so I'm gonna go new meeting over here I'm gonna go schedule assistant so with schedule assistant you'll see exactly what are the available times so in here I'm gonna say add required attendance and I'm gonna say over here Faye Sha we want I want to talk to uh, we want to have a meeting now it's going to show his schedule because you didn't put anything in your schedule it is all free so you can just move this thing to the time that you see i am available wherever it is going to be so something like that and uh, send a request for me so so just write, write the details having a question send a request i i either decline or i say accept it so for the times that i am not available that that you want to talk to me that's what you do and you send it to me and i will uh give you a response for it that's the best way of talking having uh some time and 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 talk with me uh so we can actually meet more productively so uh, i'm going to cancel this i don't want to have a meeting now uh, discard <clears throat> so that's how you do it uh, 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 do we understand this are we okay with this uh, um professor yes i did send you like a screenshot of the errors i was getting on matrix before i like screenshot my... really peter yeah but that's, I... that's a huge turn off for me <laughs> oh is it uh yeah, i mean it's, it's like from the matrix. screenshot is for 13 year old kids sending stuff <laughs> on snapchat not that like, like see what i'm seeing over here just take a look this is what i have to deal with so this is what i see when you send something like that to me this is what i see so go figure so and and you're and it's just showing an error message to me i don't see what is your source code i'm not picking on you Peter but it's yeah. it's something that everybody does they send me an error message like from an error message if I cannot say what's wrong with your code, I have to see your code we have to talk go through it debug it and all those things so um, uh, it's better to and also you can send the URL for them also that's the easiest way okay all right sure. so all right so if you want to book an appointment and i and and please don't leave your questions for three minutes before the submission time okay do your do your things uh, um, send your requests uh, earlier so we can talk okay and uh, make sure that you do it before five o'clock because I have a life too and <laughs> and I want to go back uh, to, uh, to my family and stuff so it's it's better to be before five but if not then you really can't put it after hours and I'll see if I can manage to uh, get a time so try to have it before five o'clock all right so uh, any other question about the project Any questions one? Any questions two? All right. So we talked about, so I'm just going to do a quick, like, I'm not going to go from the beginning. I'm just going to start from uh, virtuals. And uh, first of all, any questions about virtuals? Anything? Um, any questions about um, uh, inheritance? So uh, questions, any questions about inheritance or virtuals? down to this point let me just see answer any questions about virtuals or anything like that if the past stuff that we talked about okay D go ahead activate your microphone and ask the question please oh sorry <laughs> uh, yeah I do have a question go we ahead. put a word when we put virtual um, in front, so that would uh, force the compiler to, to oh, I mean, when I put virtual in the base class, mm -hmm. that would uh, force the compiler to, to execute the derived class function, right? The latest class, the, the, most, uh, the youngest class. Yes. The okay. childish class, if, if we can call it that way. Yeah, yeah. But when we put virtual in front of the destructor... It's so, the same um, thing. It calls the child's destructor. So also calls the 
a base class destructor, right? See, when you see, just always remember okay. that the base class is in the belly of the derived class, correct? Um, sorry, I, I, I can't get what you are talking about. What, what I'm saying, like when you when I when you do inheritance, what happens? Okay, so when you do inheritance, you have one base class. This is your base class, correct? Mm -hmm. When you derive it with another class, let's say I create another class out of that one, it's as if I have that class and inside that class, I have the base class. Correct? Yes. So when you call the destructor of the latest one, when you make the destructor virtual, and mm -hmm. you and because it's virtual the latest destructor will be called correct yes which means the okay. destructor of the green one the child will be called uh -huh. correct and because yeah. the parent is inside the child the oh, okay. base that will be destroyed too okay but if you yeah. don't put the virtual the, then only the red one will be destroyed and the green one stays mm -hmm. yeah okay got i got it does it yeah. make sense thank you all right yeah it makes okay. sense thank good. you good all right, so that's that. Um, any other question? Only D, no one else? All right, so let's, let's go quickly through what we have done before and then uh, we're going to continue talking about virtuals and see what the rest of the story is and how we are going to uh, use all these things. So, um, <clears throat> so now I we understood to make sure to get so we, we understood the inheritance we, un, we understood what is overriding uh, uh, so what is the difference between overriding and overloading oh D, your name came up <laughs> so what is the difference between overriding and overloading do you know D? yeah overriding is um, to call the latest version Overriding. No, 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 it's not actually. Over if if overriding has a virtual mm -hmm. in a base, then it's the latest version. Okay. So overriding is this. If so, you see the move over here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and move is not virtual, correct? No. Yes. It's not virtual. And if I ca see cat, cat has a move too, correct? Yes. So move is overriding the animal's move. Act mm -hmm. of cat. Act of cat is overriding the act of animal. Sound is overriding the sound of animal. But the 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 two who's guaranteed the latest one's gonna be called are gonna be act and sound. So they are all overriding him. But sound and act are virtual. That's the difference. Okay. Overload means the names are the same, but we have a different argument. So if I have over here act int a, if I had such a thing, then this act does not override this one anymore. This, this is not a virtual function anymore because it's a different function now. It overloads the act. If I remove it, if the signature is identical, identical, it's then override. It means they are identical beings. Do we understand this? This is a perfect question for final test. What is the difference between overload and override? Okay, so override happens only in inheritance. Over, override happens only in inheritance which means you have a child that has the exact same function as the parent that's override overload happens between any functions it could be a uh, a standalone function a standalone function can override another standalone function okay uh um, are we okay with this now sorry Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, move is not overriding, right? Of course it is. But it's, it doesn't have virtual, so right? I just mentioned that virtuality has nothing to do with overriding. See? I'm going to remove the virtuals. But, but move won't 
call the latest? Yeah, calling the latest is the result of virtuality, not overriding. Okay. So okay. a function that is ov that overwrites, the function that overwrites, shadows the parent if a child is called as a child. If a cat is in a handle of a cat, if I say cat C and I write C dot act, of course, the action of cat overrides the action of animal. Virtuality guarantees that this override happens all the time. Got it? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm sorry to hop in. Actually, my connection uh, got a little lost while you were saying it. So, can you explain from that point uh, when you made the move not virtual, then it's gonna not gonna call the latest version, right? No. See, so it, no, no. It's not. Uh, first of all, let's make one thing extremely clear here, people. We want to make something very clear here, and everybody pay attention. Virtuality only means something. If you have inheritance and you have a child pointed or referred to by a parent, if you don't have these things, if you don't have inheritance or you don't have a, ch a parent pointing to a child, then virtuality doesn't make any difference if it's virtual or not. Do we understand this, Anuj? Yes. So in here, what I'm saying, if I look at the main over here, in this main, when I have a cat P and I'm saying P dot act, it doesn't care if act is virtual or not. The act of child will be called, there is no question about it. So when I have the same type of pointer or reference pointing to a class, virtuality is absolutely nothing. The only time that you have to think about if something is virtual or not is when a parent is pointing to a child or a parent referring to a child. If that's the case, so if AR act is happening or a AP act is happening, then I have to look at the virtuality, which in this case, if they are not, which means all these things are the uh, are uh, going to be the the basics. The, the uh, uh, it's it's just gonna let me just remove it so 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 we can actually see it so when I run these two as you see it's as if there is no uh, uh, cat at all everything's just animal as you see animal 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 everything is an animal okay but when virtual when I make this virtual. Now I made all three virtual. When I make all three virtual, then when I run them, because now I have a, a parent pointing to the, uh, to the child, as you see, everything is now work acting like a cat, not, not an animal. Uh, are we okay with this? Yes. All right. So this is very important to, 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 uh, to, uh, realize obviously if i don't have virtual over here then the compiler is, is incapable of seeing the move of the child which is the move of the cat therefore the move is not going to uh i'm not going to say it's not going to be overwritten it will it is it will be overwritten if a cat is called as a cat but um the compiler is not just seeing the move of the cat to overwrite the animals and that's why the move in this case remains as it is like a like an animal and uh, it's not going to be like a cat so are we okay down to this point professor can you can you do something like on line uh 17 on the right um can you put like animal like ar dot animal colon colon 17 oh 17 at left on, sorry, on, sorry, on sorry. the right at on the right. right okay so yeah so in here what do i do uh can you put like after the period uh, like saying ar uh, uh animal 
Oh, sorry, not like that. Animal. And then colon, colon, act. act. Yeah. yeah, now you are enforcing it. You are saying, I don't want to go through virtuality. Okay, yeah. I okay. want the, the animal's act to be called explicitly. Cool. So okay. in line 18, now if I run it and I look at it, you will see that that's going to act like an animal. Right. Because you just said, the heck with virtuality. I want to manually call the animal part of the, the animal act of the cat. Right. Okay. And Thank we you. can do the exact same thing over here too. So we can say AP uh, animal uh, sound. So now I am forcing the compiler to ignore virtuality and call the animals sound. Uh, does that, is that clear? Yep, uh, that's what I wanted to, okay. to see. Yeah, but, but, and we can do the exact same thing inside the class too. And you've seen it that in sound of cat, we are actually calling the animals sound. Right. But we use scope resolution instead of dot because animal is a class and not an object. Classes property are always referred to by scope resolution and uh, the, um, uh, what you may call it, the, uh, object the instances properties with a dot anyway so that's what we had for for virtual so now with virtuals we could actually make sure that we can guarantee that the latest version of something is called and everything is beautiful but as we talked about in class and i'm going to talk about it now we uh sometimes have an idea of uh what needs to be done? Did I talk about speaking in class and the language? We did. Good. So, so going through this, going through this uh, uh, example that we had said, we said uh, a human being can speak, but we have no idea how speaking is done until I, I, I derive a human being with a specific language. So I can, I don't know, derive a, a, a Persian, Azari speaking Persian, uh, Azari speaking, Azari speaking Persian from, <laughs> from human. And therefore, if I say human speak, now the latest version will be called, which will be Azari. Or, or a Chinese, Pers Chi Chinese Cantonese speaking or Chinese Mandarin speaking. So uh, again, we have to uh, keep inheriting until it's finalized. When we have this type of functionality that we know it exists, but we don't know how to implement it yet, we call those things pure virtual methods. So, and the example for it was, set a sort of project. So the example for it was that, what well, was uh, choosing to have an animal with the sound that is not uh, still uh, obvious what it is. I don't know how an animal is going to sound unless I actually create this, the the sound. So if it's a cat, it's going to be a meow. If it's a dog, it's going to be a wolf wolf. So this pure virtual method tells me that animal must be able to make a sound, but how? I have absolutely no idea yet. So when then we go to the cat, and as soon as we go to the cat, now we can actually set the sound. And we got to say, okay, now I'm going to implement the sound of the animal and the sound of the animal in the cat is going to say meow. If I look at the animal by itself, however, there is no sound function because I just mentioned sound does not have a body. Because of this fact, the abstract base class animal cannot be instantiated anymore. In the previous one, I could have instantiated an animal. I could actually say animal a rat. I could create an animal. But now in this animal that, I, that it has a pure virtual method, the action of instantiation will cause compilation error. So if I actually come in here and look at the main, if I try to instantiate the animal and, and, and uh, compile this thing and try to run it, you will see that you're going to get an error message saying that 
object of abstract type animal is not allowed I cannot have an animal object out of animal because I don't know how the sound works therefore any class containing a pure virtual method that is just an idea of how things are supposed to be done become ab abstract and you cannot instantiate them are we okay with this <coughs> all right so yeah so these type of uh, classes we call them uh, abstract base classes and if we actually take a look at it now now that I have the animal with a sound I can create a pointer of type animal because when you create a pointer you are not creating an object so I'm creating so I'm creating over here uh, a dog and I'm gonna create creating a dog as you see got created over here so uh, a, a dog was created let me put it over here so a dog got created that's interesting there we go all right so a dog got created and in here as you see I'm creating dynamic cats and dogs in an animal pointer over here so I'm gonna say so in an array of animal pointers there's four of them so three of these things are uh, that's interesting it's not showing half of them <laughs> this is interesting what's going on here okay this uh, thing is really buggy oh there you go that's better okay so now as you see over here the three animals got created first I had a dog that was non-dynamic and the rest are dynamic so the last one is not and I'm creating a cat and a dog and so on and so forth and I'm holding the reference of the dog in an animal reference so I do have animal reference and pointers over here but obviously they're just references and pointers because I cannot instantiate an animal therefore when I actually go through a loop through the series of animal pointers I'm gonna say animal make a sound because the sound is virtual it goes to the latest version of it that is cat and it's gonna say meow and the next time the sound is being called over here it goes to a dog and says woof woof because the second one is a dog and the third one is a cat it goes to a cat and it goes to the dog and then it comes out and then I delete the first three which removes the cat the dog and a cat again and main ends and that's when the destructor of the automatic dog over here happens and everything's uh, uh, perfectly okay at this point are we okay with this all right and hopefully the rest who are not saying anything are okay too so now take a look at this I am saying PI sound so I am calling the exact same function over and over and over but each call does something different I am calling the sound over and over and over and each one that is being called is doing something different what do you call these thi this thing I am calling the same function over and over and different things are happening although the functions are identical Go ahead, four people replied, two of them perfectly correct, two of them mistake. Come on. First of all, that's override, not overwrite. <laughs> so, 
so those who are saying overwrite they are kind of correct but it's not okay so then the rest are quiet okay <clears throat> what is the meaning of doing the same thing in a different way doing the same thing in a different way yeah now everybody's answering polymorphism so this is actually perfect polymorphism this is not overloading anymore because no signature is here that is different nothing and they are all from the same type of being so I'm saying animal make a sound I am asking for an animal to make a sound but the outcome based on what type of animal I have is a completely different thing this is a perfect example for polymorphism so virtual functions are one of the most important ways and real ways of doing polymorphism do we understand this all right so having something like this we call this abstract base classes now we know that these are abstract base classes so abstract base classes can actually go to the extreme which means you can have an abstract base class you can have an abstract base class that is only providing ideas and not actual things so when you are creating an animal you're gonna say animal is a thing that can act move and make a sound it doesn't do anything else obviously I have an empty destructor over there but when we are looking at this we see act move and sound are simply pure virtual functions and the, the class animal over here does not have anything but virtual functions if sorry pure virtual functions if that's the case in C++ no difference we call this an abstract base class but in object orientation these type of abstract base classes who do not provide any type of functionality and all they do is request for objects to be for for actions to be implemented later are called interfaces so any class who has only pure virtual functions and nothing but pure virtual functions is called an interface do we understand this now interfaces are just to enforce logic interfaces are just to make sure when you are creating any type of animal that animal must act move and make a sound to exist otherwise it can't so if I create a pet out of animal I have to implement everything that animal has otherwise pet remains abstract take a look I implemented move I implemented sound here writing virtual or not writing virtual makes no difference everything that is coming from virtual functions remain virtual but anyways so this move and sound are created for a pet but no uh, uh, act is made therefore pet remains an abstract base class although it's by itself it's a derived class from animal but it cannot be used until it's actually imp inherited into something else so now if I actually create a cat out of uh, cat out of uh, pet all I need to do is to override act so now if I override act I'm gonna remove the act of the remove the sound of the cat too to, to, to show you what happens so if I actually look at it this way which means a cat out of a pet is only an animal that acts it doesn't have any specific move so what happens the move and sound will come from pet because it's implemented and the act comes from cat therefore cat is not an abstract base class anymore and it is actually a derived class uh, a concrete class so this we call a concrete class a concrete class since it 
has no pure virtual method. And that makes it a concrete. So if I actually run it, you will see that uh, a cat is going to act like a pet. Uh, sorry, move like a pet and make a sound like a pet. But as you see over here, so uh, uh, it all acts like a cat, but it's going to act like a pet because I did not uh, implement the move and the sound. But if I improve, uh, uh, implement move and the sound for the cat it's still concrete but it actually will override the move and the sound of the pet and therefore now our cat is going to actually act like a cat move like a cat and sound like a cat and this ladies and gentlemen we call interfaces do we understand this Uh, sorry, I just wanted to uh, confirm one thing. So from your like interface, if you derive other classes from like an interface, do you have to use all of the like described uh, virtual like functions and whatnot? Yes, or otherwise it won't it, work. Otherwise, period. it's not that it won't work. It's not going to be a concrete class. It's going to still need to be inherited to something else and the unimplemented pure virtual functions to be implemented so it can actually be instantiated and used. Okay, so like they do have to be like defined at some point if you want to instantiate exactly. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Exactly. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so uh, just take a look at it. Like when you create uh, interfaces, it helps you to serialize the objects, different objects in in an array now if you actually look at this one here I have series of stuff and let's take a look at the class diagram for this I have an animal then I have a pet out of pet I have a cat bird and a goldfish and out of a bird I have a body so as you see my animal setting is getting a little bigger now in my main and my animal over here as we did before is uh, an abstract based class sorry it's a, an interface so I can actually come in main and in my main I can actually create whoa yeah I can actually in my main I can actually create an array of animals and put different types of uh, animals in it and simply uh, go through them one by one until act because animal is an interface for all those things this uh, uh, program of mine will actually have a cat and a bhaji and a goldfish do all the things that are supposed to do and that's what's going to happen as you see cat bhaji and goldfish will uh, will act but I simply call the animal for that that's uh, uh, one of the very usual uh, and normal uses of pure virtual uh, functions uh, sorry uh, interfaces they literally become an interface for classes so we can actually grab one interface and different types of classes can be act be accessed by that interface uh, are we okay with this moving forward with this we can see that that interfaces can be very useful and they uh, prevent repetition of code 2. Take a look at my animal. This is the animal that I have. And now I will overload the operator, the uh, insertion operator, to print an animal. Although an animal is an app, is, is, is an interface, but I could create, I can create a function that its job is to print an animal and when I look at the code for the animal you will see that it simply says uh, um, act move and make a sound so to insert an animal into O stream is to call act move and sound although an animal has no action and now because it's here I can actually take this out too let me put it over here so all the code goes to the same place so this is gonna be animal J 
just to be consistent yeah so so now as you see over here this operator says if you want an animal to be inserted into O stream you should act move or make a sound with that animal and there's an animal reference passed over a constant animal reference passed over there and now if you look at my hierarchy everything is uh, inherited from an animal so when I go to the main over here when I want do I need to overload the uh, the insertion operator for a body for example no I do not need to do that why I don't need to do that because the body the animal that I have it is an animal and therefore when I want to insert into the uh, into uh, the the C the, into uh, the O stream <coughs> automatically it will call the latest version of act and so on and so forth so if I run this program this is how it's going to work out take a look so when the program runs <coughs> oh oh sorry I I missed something let me just uh, stop and write again and I'm gonna bring this down so we can see so as you see in here <coughs> as you see in here I have series of pets okay and I'm saying print the pet and I'm put, I'm put an asterisk beside it so this becomes actually reference of a pet because I'm calling it reference of a pet there is no O stream uh, for the pet created so if I actually take a look at the pet pet doesn't even know how to print itself but I made an animal to know how to print itself so when I actually try to cr print a pet the compiler says wait a minute isn't pet an animal it is so I'm gonna call the animal insertion operator overload for the pet so it goes to the animal now it's an animal reference with a reference of a pet in it but it doesn't matter it says pet or animal act and the latest version of action will happen that is for a cat and then the latest version of mood will happen because it's for a cat and it goes on and then it comes back in now the second one that is actually being called is again a pet but it's a body so what happens it calls the latest version of the act which is the the body and so on and so forth and then when the action for the goldfish is called it calls the action for the goldfish and so on and so forth so as you see it saves us lots of time if I want to actually uh, overload something that I know it's gonna work exactly the same way for all of them all I need to do is to overload that thing for the interface or for the pet it doesn't make any difference uh, and then everything uh, is gonna be automatically called with the proper action do we understand this and that's the end of our interface that's how interfaces work and virtual functions too and the other one is for you nine is for you it, it is the exact same thing with uh, messages that prints gets printed out in constructor and destructor and everything so you can actually activate it and you can see exactly how things get executed this is for you walk through with it and see how it works to understand exactly what the details are uh, do we have any questions Um, I think I just have one question. Ahead, um, uh, in the main file okay. um, you had earlier, how come you have to do it like pet pointer AP and then square brackets three? How come you can't just do it like as pet AP three? Because because oh. AP is then it becomes an object. Oh, okay. You can right. create an object, and even if it's an object if you actually make it let's say let's say AP wasn't abstract let's say AP let me see if AP is abstract in here are you saying like an 
Oh yeah, you're saying like an array of three pointers. That's what you're saying. This is there, two right? pointers that is getting created, and each pointer is pointing to a catabaji and a goldfish. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah. let's say I have over here bird B. Okay. Uh, does B have a copy uh, default constructor? Let me see if bird has default constructor. Yes, it does. So I'm gonna create a, a bird B. Okay. And I'm gonna say that's equal to a uh, let's say AP2, AP1. Target of AP1, sorry. Okay. If I do something like this, no suitable user defined conversion from. Oh, this is a pet, that's why it doesn't work. Um, let's say I have over here a Baji. Baji B, uh, Baji. Okay, and then in here I'm going to say bird, and I'm going to set it to BG. Okay, now if uh, what does it say? Oh my God, bird is a uh, is an abstract base class too. <laughs> <laughs> bird is is bird an abstract base class? Yeah, it doesn't. No, it, it. Oh, yeah, because it has a fly. That is pure virtual. So if it did not have fly, then this would have worked. And B is not. Then there is no virtuality here. Okay, if bird wasn't, if bird wasn't an abstract base class. This would work perfectly, but no virtuality would act over there. Do you know why, Peter? Because oh. virtuality is only when you have a pointer or a reference of a parent pointing to a child. In here, you have an object that is copy constructed from the bird, from the baji. So this bird becomes a copy of the bird part of the baji. And it's right. a bird pointing to a bird, no virtuality in here. Okay. Okay? All right. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> no problem. Any other question? Uh, James? You have a question, James? Oh, James is on audio. Let me see. James is typing. James is sorry. <laughs> Misclick? I presume. All right. And that's it. And that's for our lecture today. So we are up to date. And the next thing we are going to talk about will be classes with resources the next time you're coming in. Um, and for the uh, for your lab on Friday, we're going to do the project together. So we're going to actually sit together. If I'm well enough to come and my test goes uh, negative and it doesn't show anything, then I'll come. If it's not, then it's going to be... Uh, online again but um, I'm hoping that after the three four days I'll be uh, I'm not going to test positive anymore so we'll see what happens um, yeah uh, any questions before we go any questions hello professor yes so I just checked the um, due date for the Russia siren is um, 17 right no, but you it's changed it's 10th oh my god it's not 17th I changed it was a typo I, you just checked it 17th? No, no, no. I checked it yesterday. Let me see. Oh, I'm am I disconnected? Am I disconnected? No, I'm no, you're here. So why is it not? Okay, my my thing is inactive. I've got to restart. Let me check. <laughs> so it's two four four W seven part one. Oh, 
dash two. Now, yeah, it's it's due uh, on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. So workshop eight is going to be due on seventeenth. Actually, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, any any other question? All right, everyone. Have yourself a wonderful day. And I'm going to go grab something to eat. And then uh, all those people who want to talk to me, they can call. You can call me on Microsoft Teams. Okay. Uh, have a beautiful day. And we'll talk later. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, Professor. Bye.